lot of people know of our association with perks of being a wallflower. Um, so uh, the, the, the writer and director of Perks of Being a Wallflower, he grew up in Upper St. Clair. He um, grew up in the 90s coming to the Hollywood Theater, um, coming to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show here. So when he, uh, and he wrote, when he um, uh, wrote some of that, uh, the Rocky Horror Picture scenes into his book and then into his film, he had the Hollywood in mind in particular. So when he was coming to Pittsburgh to film, um, to film Perks, he approached the building owners who knew just about that same time was when our board of directors was, uh, or hadn't been formed yet. There was a group of people who were talking about reopening as a nonprofit. And so uh, Stephen Chabosky uh, wanted to support that. He offered um, some money, of course, to use the theater. I think it had just reopened. Um, and uh, yeah, he filmed scenes for Perks in here, um, some of our, uh, and we have a, a, a historical association with um, Pittsburgh's Rocky, official Rocky Horror Troupe. Um, and so some of the kids in, the, uh, in Pittsburgh's Rocky Horror Troupe were actually in the film. Um, so yeah, some of the, basically uh, the money that Stephen Chabosky provided uh, for renting the theater, that money was used to help file our uh, nonprofit and corporation papers. So, you know, he, um, when he came through Pittsburgh last fall on his, at the very tail end of his, uh, his press tour, um, he reached out, out to us and came and introduced a, a sold out night of Rocky Horror Picture Show um, at the Hollywood, and that's when he, he signed that poster. Uh, made a generous donation to us in our, during our um, uh, Pittsburgh Day of Giving uh, effort, and, um, and he, now he's on our advisory board. He's <laughs> sort of a patron saint, his photo's up on our advisory board. Uh, the unfortunate part of, of the story is that uh, last July, Fox, uh, Fox Studios notified The Hollywood that we could no longer show Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, on DVD or Blu-ray. We could only show it on uh, something that's called DCP, which is Digital Cinema Package. It's the new digital format that all the theaters are having to convert over to. Um, they said show it either on film or DCP, but not on Blu-ray or DVD. The catch is Rocky Horror Picture Show, highly collectible, rare, prints are rare, um, and they also said you had to get the prints from them. Um, booking is just impossible. So that effectively meant that until uh, until we get digital, uh, a new digital projector, we can't show Rocky Horror Picture Show anymore. Um, so, uh, the, the Pittsburgh's Rocky Horror Troupe, they're called um, JCCP, the Junior Chamber of Commerce Players. It's a reference to something in the film. Um, they have a historical association with the theater um, uh, and have been, ever since we reopened, have been, ever, almost every two weeks, have been um, showing Rocky Horror here. Uh, and quite successfully, um, at least since I've come on, um, you know, definitely, you know, m making hundreds of dollars every time, uh, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars um, uh, every time we show it, which is a nice, uh, a nice regular um, uh, event for us uh, and income. So, yeah, so in July, they not uh, Fox notified, uh, notified us that we couldn't show it anymore. Um, we were able to get an extension through the end of the year. Um, when I first came on, it, um, I was working some of my connections, and uh, it looked like briefly we were going to be able to continue to show it on DVD. Um, that uh, arrangement quickly disappeared, and so the end of December was our last Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, our, uh, fortunately, the, the JCCP, they're um, huge fans and supporters of the Hollywood Theater. They've done fundraisers for us, um, uh, and obviously put a lot of their um, blood and sweat into keeping this theater going. And um, they've committed to, to staying with us uh, instead of moving it to another, to another theater permanently. And um, so they, in February they performed, uh, it's called shadow casting, um, when you perform along with a, a film. They did the movie Clue. Um, and then I think in April we're looking at a, another title to do. So they've, uh, we're really thankful that they've committed to um, sticking with us uh, and um, helping how they can, showing other films until we are, we're able to get our, our, our new digital projector. So.
um, in October and November launched an Indiegogo campaign. Uh, you know, we um, received an initial quote and did some research basically telling us we needed to raise $75,000 to install a new digital projector um, capable of showing DCP, digital cinema package. Um, that includes some electrical work, um, some sound work, uh, a new projector and a server, uh, a new rack, um, and some, uh, a maintenance contract to, to be able to take, uh, take care of the uh, equipment. Um, so that, that became our goal for our Indiegogo campaign. Um, I think we have, uh, it might be right around 20 days left in our campaign. I haven't looked this past week, but I think we're probably at six or seven thousand dollars of that goal, um, which we're extremely appreciative of. Um, people, you know, we've probably had 150 donors, which is, uh, which is really great. Um, so, you know, in addition to some money that we set aside from Pittsburgh Day of Giving, um, take the six, six or seven thousand, and maybe by the end of the campaign, maybe we'll be more towards 10,000 uh, on Indiegogo. Uh, you put those together, um, we have um, we have hope that something else is in the works, and i um, not able to talk about it right now, but we have hopes that uh, within the next 30 days or so, we might find ourselves with everything combined halfway to our goal. So, um, you know, we're hoping to be right about in here within the next uh, 30 days or so. <laughs> uh, you had asked about, uh, uh, you know, uh, online social media uh, uh, fundraising. Uh, we, you know, I, I, I knew about Kickstarter uh, initially. That's sort of probably the big name in, in, in the uh, social media fundraising industry. Uh, the problem with that, and I, maybe they've changed it since, but the problem with that is if, okay, you set a goal, what you need, if you don't reach that goal, you don't get the money. Um, who was ma uh, uh, making a film, you know, set that goal, raised a good deal of money, and then lost it, all that money, because wasn't able to hit that goal. Of course, I'm sure he reached out to people individually after that, but um, uh, you kind of lose momentum um, that way. So uh, I had another friend who recommended Indiegogo, did a little more reading about it. Um, and of course, the, the benefit to Indiegogo is that uh, uh, if you don't hit your goal, you still keep the money. I mean, they take a, a good percentage of it if you don't um, hit that goal. But I feel like it's a, it's a way to reach out, uh, a new way to reach out to people that encourages giving, uh, you know, uh, in a way that they haven't done before. Um, it was a little bit of an experiment to see, um, to see how people would respond to it. Um, but I think with fundraising, there's no, sil no silver bullet. Um, so traditional mailings, uh, you know, postcards, special events, um, uh, you know, um, Indiegogo. Um, uh, making phone calls, meeting people, you got to do whatever you have to do in order to, um, to meet your goals. So uh, that was the sort of the idea behind, behind Indiegogo. We spell it out. I mean, this money is specifically going towards uh, fundraising for um, everything associated with uh, installing our, our, our digital projectors, our digital projector. Um, so we need to hit 75,000 and money that you're giving is going to uh, contribute towards that goal. Um, our primary mode of engagement with our patrons, for better or worse, is Facebook. Um, like I mentioned before, we have about 5,500 or so Facebook fans. Um, and, you know, I think, what, I don't know, a seventh of the population is supposed to be on Facebook, whether they are or not. But um, uh, people are on it, there's no doubt. And when we post something, new content, you know, we're, we're posting something every day and people are responding to it and sharing it. And that's exactly why something like a link on Facebook um, then gets shared with friends and gets shared with friends. And we're reaching people that we wouldn't normally reach otherwise. So that's what's important about it, I think. Yeah. Uh, we also have, I think, a little bit over 500 um, Twitter followers, which is, is pretty good um, for, for a, a small organization. Uh, and we have a great um, volunteer uh, tweeter. Um, Chris Rickert from LJ's Books. She's an extraordinary uh, tweeter, and she's on there every day engaging those folks as well. So uh, yeah, next. we're hoping uh, we're hoping in the next uh, month or two to hit half to head halfway with when everything is combined. So uh, the next step from there, um, uh, and that, uh, my next responsibility is, um, and I've just started doing this 
reaching out to foundations, um, uh, you know, um, grant givers, um, and uh, and individuals who are interested in in, in helping us. And uh, I think that we're hoping that that's what's going to you know, if we can show that we've raised um, half or more of our goal, we're hoping that there's uh, a foundation corporation uh, out there that would be interested in seeing with the Hollywood.